Hey friends, welcome to the Journey Church here on Sunday morning worship at Journey Church Online. So glad that you are tuning in to our experience in worship this morning. We're a church that wants to connect new people to Jesus and to love our neighbors. And we do this through a variety of ways, through journey groups, through our work with justice and anti-racism, through the work with our community engagement, through hospitality, and all these kind of ways. And so thank you for tuning in to our worship experience this morning. Right now I just invite you uh, to, uh, to like and share this video to help us connect with new and more people with Jesus this Advent. Now, I'm going to ask, we invite you actually just to share this from now on. No need to do a watch party. We found just some problems with that where we can't always engage. Links aren't always posted. And we just know there's a little bit of a gap there. So we actually invite you just to share this video uh, on your Facebook, on your YouTube uh, for more people to connect with Jesus this day. But this morning... As we sing songs, I invite you to lean in and sing with us, as awkward as it may be from home. As we read scriptures, we hear from the word, as we pray together, I invite you to find a way at your house right now, maybe to turn your room, your living room, your kitchen, maybe even your car, into a place of peace for you today, a, peace, a place of shalom, a sanctuary, a sacred place for you and maybe those who are around you. Connect with a God who loves and is born this season of Christmas. So friends, lean in and be a part of our worship this morning. Well, good morning, Journey Church. I am excited to welcome you back to my living room for living room worship part two this week. And um, just wanted to share something with you that's been on my heart. I, As I was praying and, and thinking through the worship set for this week, I was thinking a lot about um, you know, the world that we're in and the chaos and the changes and things that are really hard and the holidays can be really hard for people who have just gone through different things throughout this year and through years past. And um, I was thinking about the beauty of tradition and how much I love hymns. And I don't think I know a, a lot of hymns, but anytime I've sung them before, there's this beautiful connection over centuries of time of people who also love Jesus and love the Lord and, and fought, have followed him faithfully through lots of changing seasons and, and times. And something about words and knowing that they've been sung and truth has been declared throughout those changing seasons and centuries and years and years is really beautiful. Um, it reminds me of that passage in Hebrews, the cloud of witnesses. Like, And, and when we sing songs like this and, and join in worship, we are joining that cloud of witnesses. And so I wanted to open this morning with a hymn. It's actually one of my favorite Christmas hymns, and it's called I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And it has one of my favorite lyrics in like all of worship songs where it just says, uh, then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. And I think it is such a beautiful truth that I need to be reminded of in this time, um, that even though it looks like there isn't peace on earth and that there's only hardship and pain and and struggle that God is not dead. God is here and he is alive and he is moving and there's hope in this season. And so um, I'm going to invite you to sing this with me. I heard the bells. <clears throat> Oh, 
Jesus, I just pray we put our hope in your name today. Whatever fear or depression or anxiety, or sickness, pain that we're fighting, your name is greater. We thank you for this season where we get to celebrate that you have come. so that we don't have to live in hopelessness. And that you came to show us how to live, how to extend that love and that hope to others, God. We pray that we would do that, that we would seek to do that, but that it starts in our own hearts, that it starts with our own faith and assurance of your presence of your goodness, of your truth. We rest in your name, Jesus. Welcome to worship. My name is Deb and I'm one of the pastors here at The Journey. I'm actually joining you today in the live chat and so I'll be sharing some information for you there. And one of the really important pieces is our connect card. You should have a link for that in the live chat and I encourage you at some point today, please take a moment and fill that out because we want to connect with you. Um, also, if there's any way we can be praying for you, feel free to share that now or at any time during the service or just send us a private message as well. We want to be supporting you in prayer. Now, today is our third Sunday in our Advent series, and Advent is that time that leads us to Christmas, a time of great celebration. And so every week we have a different theme, and we've been lighting a candle every week. So if you are lighting a candle at home with us, this is a great time to grab your candle. And if you don't have a candle to light, that's okay. Maybe you just want to turn on a light in your house, and that can be a reminder for you all week. The theme this week and our symbol this week is joy, and so our candle lighting this week is all about joy. Now my daughter Elizabeth, her birthday is actually tomorrow, and when people ask her, what do you want, what kind of present do you want, she always reminds them, now I'll tell you she's going to be five, she always reminds them, you can't tell me, don't tell me what it is. She likes the anticipation and the joy of receiving gifts. So how many of you do that? Do you want to sneak in and see what your gifts are, or do you like that anticipation and joy? Well, that's what today is about. It's about that anticipation and joy of Christmas, and it gets us ready for that celebration. I want to share a scripture with you, and it's from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. Certainly a time filled with joy. And so let us now light our candles wherever you are, or turn on your lights. And again, you can do this today, you can do it all week long, but that candle may be a reminder of the joy and anticipation of this season. Let's have a word of prayer together. Generous, giving God, thank you for calling us in hope as we lean upon your faithfulness. Keep our hearts and minds open and our lives ready for you. Come, precious Jesus, come and reveal your everlasting love. Amen. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, O oh God, be acceptable and pleasing to you. For you, O oh Lord, are our rock, our redeemer, and ultimately the reason of this season. Amen. What if I could offer you 
a different kind of experience this Christmas? What if I could offer you an entirely different kind of experience this Christmas? Every year around this time, right, we're hustling and we're trying to figure out kids and gift shopping and, and work and spouses and decorations. And, and in some sense, because of the year that we had, I say, thank God it's Christmas. But are we looking at each other right now? And if we took a moment just to notice ourselves, our family, our neighbors, what, what would we see? Look around. Maybe looking around and you can see people who are anxious and exhausted and terrified. When I look at my own family, I see a, a anxious uh, first-time or second-time parents. I see nieces and nephews of mine and parents anxious and stressed out about Zoom and, and virtual school. I see exhausted healthcare workers who are exposed to COVID every day. I see Hannah's grandmother terrified and alone in a, ho a nursing home and, and her aunt desperately trying to care for her and bring her to her home. I see us terrified about family members who have COVID or may have contacted COVID. And I see anxious and exhausted people who, who may not be able to gather this Christmas. I see people just downright tired from every decision, every thought, every conversation, everything. When you look around your family and your sphere of influence right now, what do you see? Do you see anxious, exhausted, terrified, stressed out people in your life? Or is it just me? Or perhaps it may be even a haunting question. When you look at yourself in the mirror right now, what do you see? Do you see the lines of anxiety on your face or dark circles under our eyes from sleepless nights worrying about family and job and finances? What do you see this Christmas? What if I could offer you an outlet, a different way to experience Christmas this year, one that can provide within you joy in your life and joy that you can extend to other people? What if I could offer you an outlet this Christmas to experience it in a different way that provides joy in your life and perhaps in the people around you? I want to start off just by reading some scripture this morning from Luke chapter 2, verses 5 to 20. He, Joseph, went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. When they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in the bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel of, of a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into the heaven, the, the shepherds said, they said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has shown to us. So they went with haste, with energy, with passion, and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured, she treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. You know, often when I, when I hear this story, a story that we hear and we read every year. In some sense, it feels like a fairy tale. It, it kind of sense seems so polished, right? Anytime we begin reading in Luke chapter two, if this isn't your first time, first Christmas being a Christian, when, when you begin, you, you kind of always, already know what the, how the ending's gonna happen, right? You, Joseph and Mary are on this journey. Shepherds are startled by the angels. And yet, in this story, we actually see real life happening. We see Joseph, Joseph anxious, with all of these unknown fears and responsibilities of becoming a new father. Not just any child he's the father of, but a son who the angel told him was the very son of God. We see Mary, exhausted from the labor of giving birth and worn out from the long journey. I love this photo that you'll see on your screen right now of just maybe a real picture of what it must have been like with Mary to maybe breastfeed or, or to care for this young little child named Jesus. And we see the shepherd who the scriptures 
say were terrified. And at first, the angel said to the shepherds to not be afraid. And the shepherds were distracted and, and interrupted by this course of angels in the middle of the night of their shift at work. And they were terrified. And I can imagine their hearts were pounding as they approached the manger. You see, I think the angel pronounced peace on earth to them. And these shepherds, they were in the sense of this journey, actually. And, and so once they heard this message from the angels, they, they, hunt, they hunted, they, they went with passion and haste to go find this, this baby uh, named Jesus that they heard, this Messiah, this Lord, the Savior. And, and this angel uh, were giving them instructions. And I love verse 10 in particular. I actually want to hone in on verse 10 this morning. And it says this again. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. And there are words for us this morning in this. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. So here's what I want you to do. If you have your Bible out or if you just have a scrap piece of paper, I want you to write that out, actually. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. And I want you, in your Bible or as you write that out right now, I want you to underline or circle three words or phrases. The word you, the word great joy, and the word for all people. Underline you, great joy, and all people. And I think in the very midst of the season that we're in right now, what, what I'm so struck by in this Advent as I was wrestling, I have to tell you, like the sermon process this week was not easy, right? I struggled for days. I'm like, what even to share with you? And then as I was reading this, I was so struck by verse 10. Like, I am bringing you, you, people who are listening to me right now, me, Davis, who's here right now, I am bringing, the, the angel proclaimed that God is bringing us good news. And this news, this good news to us actually was of great joy. And ultimately, this was a great joy for all people. So what if I could tell you, or what if I could offer you an outlet, a different way to experience Christmas this year that provides abundant joy in your life and others? What if we could experience Christmas differently, a different kind of sense this year? And here's what I think it is. The joy of gift giving. I know, immediately, when I said gift-giving, what did your mind go to? Your mind might have went to Amazon, which has become our best friend in the season, right? Amazon, UPS, FedEx, our minds might have gone there. Our minds might have got to like that, the toys that our kids want us to buy every year, or the little toy that we may be sending to our kids anyways. Our minds quickly probably went to that, to the delivery people who are all over our city, dropping off packages all the time. And we read about gift-giving in the Bible, though. In the Gospel of Matthew, uh, we, we read about, or we often see in our nativity scenes, we, we read about three magi, right? Or three kings or three wise men, as they're often told. And, and they came to, to see Jesus, and they brought three gifts, right? And you might know these gifts, right? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, to be completely honest, it probably was not just three men. It was probably like a herd of men. So let's think like a, maybe 50, 100 men coming after Jesus. And they probably brought more than just three gifts. They probably maybe bought abundance of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And in, often we think about them that they came in a couple of days after Jesus' birth. But honestly, they, these wise men would have come probably years after Jesus was born. And these men, they brought gifts. So gift giving, in the very beginning of the scriptures, it's there. It's the power of gift giving. And yet these magi in this time, it was known that they were to give gifts um, to people whom they respect or people who had power, or people who were meant to be in a position of authority or power. And so these wise men, these magi, this herd of men, were giving gifts up to Jesus to a sign of Jesus' authority and position. So wouldn't it be amazing, actually, this year, if we think about our families, like if all of the kids in our own life had to give parents uh, gifts instead of parents giving their kids a gift. Does that make sense, right? Like imagine this is kind of what's happening in this moment, right? This is a time when you actually gave gifts up to people whom you respect. But I did a little bit more research on gift giving in our world, actually. Uh, and I don't know if you know this, and I would love to know if you've maybe heard some of this. Gift giving actually in the 1600s centered actually on the poor or those who were having economic difficulty. And in towns and communities, actually, in the 1600s, on Christmas Day, the poor would actually go to various Christians' houses, people who follow Jesus, and would be offered a gift, given a gift to basically help them in the season, right? And it wasn't actually until the 1800s, 200 years later, actually began in New York City, that people actually started giving their gifts to children at Christmas time. So in the 1600s, Gift giving centered on those who are actually in need in Christmas only. We didn't give gifts to one another or to our kids. Gift giving in the 1600s was simply just to those who were in need. 
200 years later, in the 1800s, it changed forever. In the 1800s, Christmas giving went from completely being outward to those who were in need to completely inward just to our own family. So imagine, I'm not necessarily saying that maybe gift giving is bad for our own family, but there was a shift that happened in the world, a shift that happened in Christianity, a shift that happened right here in our own city uh, just simply 200 years ago. That Christmas went from being this place of external gift giving, helping those who were in need, helping those who didn't have, to being completely about building up our own Christmas trees and putting them all around for people in our own family. And I think maybe God is still honored in, in our gift giving in our families. But I actually want you and I to experience a different kind of gift giving this season. We already know how to buy gifts for our kids, our spouses, and our friends. So I'm not going to actually invite you to do that. You're already going to do that because that's what we've been conditioned to do for the last 200 years. But instead, I actually want us to offer two different kinds of gifts this season. And I think these two particular gifts can offer you and I a sense of joy that Luke 2.10 was talking about. That this was the news of great joy for all people. And I wonder if this is the kind of gift and the kind of joy that we could offer the world right now. So the first one is this. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to give the gift of encouragement this year. And we read in one of Paul's books in, in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5.11, we read these words, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. And even a better way to even describe that is to encourage one another to strengthen each other. Now, what if we gave the gift of encouragement this year to our family, to our spouses, our kids, and honestly, everyone that we came encounter with? Like, our, honestly, like, you know this, right? Our world needs a little sense of encouragement. Like, we know the people in our community, healthcare workers, you know, restaurant owners, they're, they're, we're experiencing a sense of anxiety and, and exhaustion and overwhelmness. And what if we gave the gift of encouragement this year? Now, you know there is enough cynical and cranky people in the world probably know them. And at times, honestly, we're those people. We're too tired. We're exhausted. But what if we celebrated the greatest savior of the world coming into the world and we offered a different kind of gift to celebrate the greatest gift of all, to offer a gift of joy, which in the sense of encouragement. Now, in some sense, we can experience joy and overcome our own level of anxiety by spending a little bit of moments, a few moments outside of ourselves and to really encourage someone. So this happens to a couple of different things. It happens through our words. When you think of something positive about someone, tell them. Like, how many times have you thought about some, someone or, or impressed about something they did? Express that to them. Or maybe we need to start thinking positive. Maybe when you think about someone in your life, you think of nothing positive, right? They only frustrate you. But what if in this moment, in this season, right, if what if our attitude was that of giving words of encouragement to people in our lives and our sphere of encourage and to encourage them. So part of it, actually, I invite you to actually be very specific about it. Like, what about them? Or what about how God has made them or created them? What about your relationship that you have with that person that you're thankful for? What, what is something you can highlight in someone else's life to encourage them and in some sense to strengthen them up? Now, oh, I think when you're nudged to say something nice, or to encourage someone, I invite you to do it. Maybe sometimes you have that feeling within you, but you're like, nah, that might be a little weird. They might not want to hear it from me. But I actually think that each of us deeply long to be encouraged in our life. Now, there's a pretty little bucket in my, in my office. If you've ever been to my office here, uh, it was one of my uh, pieces of decorations, and I, and I forgot about this, actually, um, at, until I was writing this sermon. And this is a bucket, and it has probably about 150 little slips of paper in it. And I received this as a gift probably about 10 and a half years ago in a m moment of kind of deep frustration and darkness in my own life. And this is a gift from someone, and it was actually in a different container at the time, but I transitioned it to this. And there are 150 words of encouragement here. And so the person who gave it to me said, if you're ever having a depressed day, just grab one of these pieces of paper and may it be an encouragement to you in your life. And I've always kept this in my office in, in either this church or the last church I was at. And to invite people, if you just need a word of encouragement, uh, to grab one of these slips of paper out. So I'm actually going to make sure if you, the next time we're in church, next time you can come back to our building, I invite you actually just to head into my office and to grab a slip of paper just as a form of encouragement in your life. But I have a friend, I have a friend in my life who, who regularly, regularly will just actually call me 
or send me a quick text message. And he'll call me simply just to say, I love you, I'm thinking about you, and I hope you're doing well. And part of what I think the gift of encouragement is is simply in the midst of our life, just to call up someone, to tell someone, just to spend a few moments, not of being cynical or not of maybe being cranky, but if the season is meant to experience great joy of Jesus, that's really meant for all people, how are we helping speak joy and live in, in an action of joy for those who are around us? So I invite you to be intentionally filled with encouragement this Christmas. And the last gift I actually want us to give this year is the gift of time. Maybe it's five minutes, maybe it's ten minutes, maybe it's one hour, but valuable time, uninterrupted time for someone in your life. And I think just time is so valuable. And I know I'm not that old, but I think the older I get, the more I realize how time is so valuable. Sitting, listening, slowing down enough just to be with those in your family or those with whom you care about. And I think the greatest joy that we can offer somewhere this year is honestly just the gift of time. And you know, we can easily, each one of us, and we can name our own thing, and maybe you want to name this right now in the chat, we can each name what distracts us the most. Maybe it's Netflix or sports or just watching mindless television or news or work or emails or video games or social media. There are so many forms of distraction in our world that we lose the capacity just to be present with someone, someone else and just to offer them the gift of time. And how many of you, if you're honest, you recognize how difficult it is just for you to sit down with a meal with someone and not look at your cell phone? You know, Anne and I recently had a quarantine for a week. Um, and it was one of those uh, moments where we just hadn't had a week together in a long time where we literally didn't leave the house. Um, and, and we felt like, we spent the more time in that one week than we had probably in so many months. And, and I think we began to have a conversation around how often we fill up our schedules and we become so distracted as people that we, we forget just the premise of life, which is probably just like spending time together. And, and Jesus, I think, was so remarkable at this. Like, he seemed to never be bothered by disruptions, right? Jesus would be going about his day. He'd be maybe walking through the city or beginning to go. He's heading somewhere, and someone begins to interrupt him, right? And they begin to ask him, like, they ask him for healing, or they ask him for help, or maybe they had a question, or in some sense, they maybe had a snarky question to ask Jesus, right? And, and yet, Jesus never seemed to be bothered by these interruptions, right? I think in some sense, Jesus saw these interruptions as opportunities. We see interruptions as annoyances, don't we, right? Like, I'm focused. I just want to do what I need to to do, or I'm heading to the grocery store, I just want to go there, or, and in some sense, I think we lose the capacity just to be fully present with someone else. Jesus was always so intentional with his time, and he never seemed to be bothered by interruptions, and Jesus was always saw an interruption as an opportunity to heal someone or to teach them something new about the way of Jesus, the way of life he was offering, and I think sometimes we just see this time and these interruptions as annoyances, but I think Jesus loved them. I want to tell you a story about a friend named Levi in my last church. The last church I pastored in State Line, small little community in Franklin County. We launched a ministry while I was there, uh, focusing on a local motel, actually, that was just a few minutes from the church. And this motel in particular wasn't a normal hotel where people just come and stay for a night and they would kind of move on as they're kind of maybe vacationing or traveling. This was particular a motel where people maybe who were homeless or who had housing, but who had some housing and security, they would actually go to this motel and they would rent a room for maybe a month or so. And so this entire hotel, motel, was, was filled with, with residents who were living there, but in the small little quarters. And it honestly, it was funny, interesting, in my, in my small little town, many people in my church didn't really think there were many needs in, in, in our community. But as we spent a little bit of time just reading or, or asking questions and really spending time driving and praying around our neighborhood, we saw this particular place as a place where we as a church wanted to invest. And, and so this church still now to this day has investment into this particular uh, state line uh, motel. And when we came, we decided discovered actually in this process that there were about 25 kids uh, who were living in this motel from three different school districts. Um, and because they were considered homeless, like the districts would come from afar to pick up the kids and to, uh, send them to school. And so we as a church just felt so overwhelmed and, and, and we felt actually so filled with passion to we wanted to fill in this gap and just be a positive light uh, in, in their life. And so it led us to do some pretty crazy things and cool things, right? One of them one summer with a couple different barbecue picnics outside where we brought tables and and, and gifts and, and, and big things for kids to play. And we, and we just had a lot of fun just getting to know some of these kids and families. And, and one of the significant
significant things that we did was every month we committed um, to take uh, bags of groceries to the families. Uh, and so I remember the first time we went, we just knocked on all the doors, and some declined, and some accepted. Um, and what we began to do just over this multiple-year ministry was begin to build significant relationships with people. Now, to be completely honest, I was content. I was content helping the church collect donations every month. I was content, honestly, uh, spending uh, one Wednesday a month uh, ba uh, bagging up 40 grocery bags and delivering them to the 40 different uh, residents uh, to the hotel. That, I, I mean, honestly, I felt good about that, right? And I was like, you know, I can help once a month. I'm probably not interested in helping anymore. And then one of the residents we got to know, his name is Levi. And Levi began to call my office. And he would call often. And somehow, I don't, still don't know how, Levi uh, found my cell phone number. And so Levi began to call my cell phone all the time. And one particular day, Levi called me about 20 times trying to get me, right? And in a moment of deep frustration, in a moment of me wanting to throw my cell phone, I just finally answered the phone. And I, you can imagine the kind of tone that was in my voice, like, what do you want, Levi, right? Hi, Levi, this is Chris. What do you need, right? And a deep moment of frustration. And what I began to realize is that he was calling because the groceries that we provided once a month uh, weren't enough. And so he was actually having a moment of food insecurity and really needed to help, uh, need some help. So it was in one of those moments, and maybe you've had these moments, where I felt like I had enough to do. My schedule was full. I had things to do. Have you ever said that I have things to do? But I decided that, okay, Levi, he has some food insecurity, so I need to go to help him out. And so you can imagine, I didn't have this great tone or great body language where I'm so excited to help you. I actually had a little bit more of a frustrated, cynical, annoyed spirit about myself. And so I went and picked him up at the motel. We went to the grocery store. I remember lamenting and frustrated about how slow he was all throughout this kind of grocery sh uh, store experience. And on the way home, I remember so vividly that Levi began to tell me a little bit more about his story. That Levi told me that he was a, he's 19 years old. He was kicked out of his home at 12. And from 12 to 19, he was living on and off the streets in, in the town of Hagerstown. He didn't graduate from high school because of it. And his family wanted nothing to do with him. And he finally had this capacity through some government support to be in this motel to have a safe spot to live. And you know, in most days, he actually spent time wondering if anyone cared about him. So for the last seven years, he kind of continually lived with rejection from his parents who didn't want him. I remember thinking to myself in that moment, just of like, kind of a kick to the stomach or the heart, right? Just of like, Chris, you were so busy doing whatever you were doing. But all I needed to do was spend a little bit of time with Levi. And so when I dropped Levi off that day, I helped carry his groceries uh, to, his, to his room. <laughs> And there's a great big hug after it. He embraced me in this 19-year-old man. He said, I love you, pastor, as loud as he could in the hallway of his hotel room. And I walked away speechless that day. And I always, and when I think about this sermon today, I just begun to think about my friend named Levi. And just hours before that, I was telling myself how busy I was, that I was so annoyed that Levi kept calling me 20 times over and over and over. I had this annoyed spirit about myself the entire time I was with Levi. And I think we could all say we're too busy. We all have a lot going on this season. We all have full plays. We all have family dynamics. We all have family kids and stuff happening, right? We all have work happening. But I wonder if the power of Christmas and the power of Jesus and the power of the angels saying to the shepherds, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you great news and great joy for all people. And I wonder if we can give the gift of time this Christmas. And maybe that time will help you, maybe just with your family. Maybe you can think about your kids or your spouse or your brother or someone in your life that's significant that you just need to call up and give them some of your time. Or maybe it's you're giving your time right now, but you want to give maybe time to people in our city and in in maybe a ministry to our church or someone else in the city. I think the power of Christmas in the 1800s, gift giving, went from being completely outward to completely inward. I think this season is marked by the incredible amounts of stuff, let's just call it that stuff, that we give to the people in our lives. But maybe this year, in the midst of anxiety, of feeling overwhelmed, in the tired, weary state that we may be in, what if we can give the greatest gift of all, 
Let us give the gift of encouragement and the gift of time to one another and maybe to sign to God that we've mastered what the season is all about. Because as Luke 2.10 says, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. And that was Jesus. What kind of news, what kind of joy are we experiencing in our life and we're sharing with others this season? Let us pray. Jesus, thanks for just worship. Thank you for the capacity just in this right moment on this Sunday morning that we could have been giving our time to other things, right? We could be preoccupied by other things, but God, instead we chose to be here. We chose to be with our community of faith. We chose to be with the church. And so, God, I pray that even this morning as, as we've shared, God, I pray that you inspire us, that you you lit, can you build a fire within us, God, to just to be people of encouragement and people of time, of offering time to other people this season. God, may we not be too busy. And God, may we not be too proud to not offer encouragement and time to other people. And God, actually, I pray for just our hearts to soften, for moving from a place of cynicalness or frustration or being awfully or quickly annoyed. God, I pray that we move away from that and we embody the true you. God, for you being the Prince of Peace, for you being a wonderful counselor, for you being the Messiah, the Lord, the hope, of all. And so, God, may we not experience just hope in ourselves, but God, may we be inspired to give joy and hope to other people this week. So, God, thank you for the gift of Jesus and the gift of Christmas and the gifts that you want us to give and extend to other people this season. In the name of Jesus, we pray.
can we be people who give the gift of encouragement this year? And maybe even the gift of time, which I hope that you feel compelled, even in this moment of worship as we were singing with Christy. I pray that maybe you were inspired, that, that God was stirring within you, and you at least a moment in your own sense to experience a sense of joy that is of Jesus. But I also invite you, actually, to give a gift that fills a need. Now, maybe part of that is maybe even for here in our church. Uh, maybe I invite you to, to be generous and, and to give to the ministry of our church, oh, something I, I invite you to every week. And particular needs of ours right now are to continue to help funding our community classroom ministry or to even help us propel into 2021 in a strong financial position. And so I invite you to give um, to the ongoing ministry of justice and of peace um, and of community engagement and discipleship here in our church. And so I invite you to fill that gap if you feel led today. today. And there'll be a, a link on your screen uh, or in your feed to kind of take a next step in that. But I also invite you to, to give a gift that helps fill the need elsewhere in the city as well. I know Christy shared last week during our uh, worship around the gifts that we're going to give to our community classroom students, and she's just been so overwhelmed by your generosity. So thank you, right? Wow, you came through, right? That we can offer gifts, significant gifts, to some of our students, some of the young scholars that we've just grown to appreciate and love this last couple of months. And so thank you for your generosity. But, but friends, we're never done with living a life of generosity. And so however God is calling you right now to help fill in the gap, right? I invite you to think specifically of who is someone in your life or where is someone in the city that you may feel compelled to give today. I want to invite you to give. You'll hear more about our Christmas Eve plans. Uh, so I invite you to continue to lean in to the ministry and the life here at our church. But my friends, may you go in the name of the God who created you, the God who redeems you and the God who sustains you. May you and may we offer great joy for people this Christmas through encouragement, through time, and helping filling in the gaps with our financial resources. Amen and amen. Happy December, friends. My name is Chris, and I'm one of the pastors here at The Journey. We are so excited for what we have planned for this Christmas Eve together. Now, we know Christmas season is looking a little different this year, and, and normally we would have probably a much larger gathering, a celebration, but this year, we're so excited about the three uh, ways for each of us to engage in the celebration of Jesus and lifting up hope together this uh, Advent season. And so, on Christmas Eve, December 24th, we have three different ways for all of us to engage. The first one is at six o'clock. Be a brief out door service here at The Journey on our front porch. Be at six o'clock and, and we'll be social distance, we'll wear a mask and we'll read scripture together, Luke chapter two. Uh, we will sing some songs together, we'll have a Christmas homily sermon and prayer together and then we'll end that service in a traditional way of singing Silent Night while uh, lighting candles together in a circle. And so that's a brief 20, 30 minute service. If you are looking for an in-person touch, social distance outside, we hope that you'll come at six o'clock. The next option at seven o'clock, this is our a big online worship experience. This is very much like we do right now Sunday morning, uh, but instead we'll pre-record that, we'll have a time for our kids, we'll have communion, we'll read scripture as well. We'll sing together some traditional songs, uh, and then we will even have um, a time of communion. And so we hope that, that that service will be meaningful for you. This will be our big, kind of big worship experience. Now, there are a couple ways you can watch that, either Facebook or YouTube, and there'll be a Zoom option as well if you want to watch it with other people. And then at eight o'clock, oh, another way to have a personal touch on Christmas Eve is a Journey a community Zoom call. And so this is all Journey people. If you are a member, if you've been uh, a kind of been a part of our church for a while, or you're brand new, we hope that you'll tune in at eight o'clock uh, for a Zoom call. We have 20 minutes or so. Maybe some of us will be in our, our favorite Christmas sweaters or favorite hats or whatever. And just a way for us to laugh and just to have a moment of togetherness on Christmas Eve. And then we'll sing at the very end, we wish you a Merry Christmas together for all of us to wish each other a very Merry Christmas. And so no matter what you're experiencing this season, no matter the good and the bad, no matter if you will be alone or you'll be with your family, we hope that you will lean into Advent with us here at The Journey and that you will experience the abundant hope and love and the joy and the peace of Christ this season. So my friends, Merry Christmas and join us on The Journey.
Thank mm-hmm. you.